Welcome again, this is Loroler, and uh, today we're gonna uh, check out how to make this sort of uh, screech sound with FM8. If you're not very familiar with this plugin, uh, you might want to check out the previous video I made uh, where I gave you like a brief uh, couple of notions on how to uh, use this plugin and if, with what you can do basically with uh, frequency modulation in general. And uh, But for those who know this plugin already, let's dive into what I made. So let's start here from the FM8. It looks a lot more complex than it really is. So um, to just make it... Um, easier for you guys to understand. I'm just gonna open a new patch here and uh, explain you step by step how I got into this. So we just dive into the operators here. As you can see, I just have, these are all carriers, okay? And uh, this is a modulator. All of these carriers are uh, sawtooths. And uh, as you can see from the ratio here, they're all sort of manually uh, detuned uh, between one and another and uh, they all go through the saturator uh, operator and uh, they also uh, all go through this filter which is uh, again connected through this uh, saturation uh, operator and um, the filter itself feeds into uh, all these operators again to give some uh, sort of like a inharmonic content to the sound and um, again all this uh, a bunch of operators are modulated by this uh, very um, simple sine wave and uh, what we're gonna do here is just like uh, recreate this thing so just you know just they go then you um, option click all these to activate them well, we might want to activate these two, and like this goes uh, about 50. So uh, yeah, you get that, the, uh, you know, just like go here, go 50, 50. And uh, about the values, uh, I didn't really, uh, I just tweaked till I kind of found uh, the, the cool um, ratio of values I wanted uh, for uh, manually detuning this all these uh, sawtooths and I just uh, I actually came up with the idea of feeding the all these operators with a filter by accident because uh, I just uh, clicked it with the wrong the wrong cell with the with the the mouse but I ended up with a cool effect that I've been using a lot so uh, yeah it's actually a pretty um, you know all these sonic accidents sometimes they really help you to uh, find something new you know just like with many others of my ideas for tracks in general. So um, now we're just gonna feed back here with the filter onto uh, all these uh, operators. Yep. And we have here the sine wave, we're just gonna feed all these. Um, all these uh, operators as well and just like go here and um, this is not really exact the amount uh, we have here but you know you get the idea pretty much and on top of this you what you didn't see is that I did some sort of like a um, envelope and pit on the pitch here so just like go here and replicate this thing there's actually uh, there's uh, within the presets this uh, pitch falling which is uh, just an envelope which is calculated mostly on the pitch and we're just gonna sync it as well as we did before and go here like analog is gonna be like 45 more or less analog is like that uh, amount of uh, controlled amount of disorder we talked about in the other video and um, now on top of this I been on the master section where I've been touching here the unison and detune parts and just increase the polyphony of the sound and make it monophonic obviously uh, turn the parliament on and go about here as we did before and like obviously increase the detune here and wanna increase also the stereo imaging the panning of the, the sound and um, just wanna increase as well the uh, pitch here 
And um, I think I actually forgot to uh, manually go through the bother of... Yes, actually switching these to sawtooths. Otherwise you get like a complete different sounds. As you uh, as I uh, just change this oscillators, you see that the uh, display uh, showing the um, harmonic content is actually changing, and it's starting to look like like this one finally. And uh, so I go here, and like this one was about so high. It just like a click and uh, pull the mouse up to change the value, and uh, here is. 2020 2000 yeah or oh, 2. Point, wait it's like 2.0 and then 205 let's see if 2.0.205 oh, no all right no luck with this i have to do it manually Okay, now uh, just go here in this other oscillator. The T is oh no, 96. Again, really, there's no rule for this for this detuning. You just like try every time manually and see what works for you. The, um, the thumb rule is that you have like a one main value, which is like a, for instance, the F is one, and you try to like uh, tweak all the other uh, oscillators you're working with uh, a little bit and offset them uh, compared to uh, what is your reference value. In this case, in this case is F. So is one, you're gonna just move around that. And okay, so this area we think I think we it's covered really. Uh, what we gotta do apply is the filter envelope here, and we're just gonna use something like uh, standard attack decay, and we're gonna change it. And this is tempo synced, so we might want to tempo sync it as well. And it goes about here, and like here, you just pull it a little bit up, and just like pull this thing down a bit. And this is. Yeah, about here so just more or less okay now next thing we want to do is make it a band pass so like a high pass and a low pass there you go just like we did here and cut off as like about 26 so just this sort of information is basically like the amount of uh, of uh, the the filter cut off which is gonna feed into the saturator uh, and then into the operators themselves and uh this is the amount of envelope we want to copy that it's like 32. let's see how much does it actually affect on this uh spectrum really and um now we're gonna cover the effect section because i actually use them a lot and uh effect sections here like okay they obviously obviously always use this overdrive to kind of add some uh, drive to the tune and um, I use the shelving uh, equalizer to try to add back some high shelves here and um, now a little bit of reverb uh, what we're gonna um, do is just add a lot of uh, uh, decay and reverb but not really a lot of like a wet percentage because uh, when we're gonna distort it later on with the isotope if you compress something which has reverb or you distort it or you just like uh, tend to um, alter its dynamics if you have reverb it will sound like as if there's a lot more reverb than you really actually added in the first place and we just are trying to add a little bit of space to the sound but you don't really want to uh, overdo it so we're just gonna add a, a little touch you know reverb All right, so this area is covered as well. Now I uh, might wanna check out the effects section. So just gonna go here, uh, use uh, just using a channel uh, standard um, equalizer, which comes in Logic. You can choose whatever you want. What you, what I'm gonna do in basically is just gonna go here, like a cut about here, uh, to just like remove this 
bass frequencies we don't really need in this kind of sound and just um, also remove this high part that we don't really need much. Next, we might want to add some modulation here uh, at the chorus and just like put it a little bit um, about here and it's going to be in high intensity and low rate. Uh, just let me check compared to that one. Yeah, more or less. Okay, um, now what we're gonna do next is add the isotope trash as we did here. And um, I use it uh, mostly like, uh, not just as a uh, distortion unit, but also some sort of like a brick wall limiter because of, of all this like um, boosts and uh, distortion effects. You might end up like uh, clipping in your channel, but not with the isotope, which is a really cool unit. And um, see how it sounds now. Maybe that's a little bit too much, is it? Alright, I wanna like pull this thing down a little bit. Alright, now uh, there's a filter unit in the uh, isotope we use a lot and basically what uh, happens is that you can okay ch just uh, change the bands and you could see we do like a standard equalizer but a cool thing is that you can automate this like with an alpha so the alpha can be synced or can be just off sync and here you decide the rate in case like we are working off sync here and what it does, it just basically is I, is like as if I was manually automating the, the band of the, the, the frequencies where I added this boost. And like, just check how I did it here. Oh, that was a lot more than we actually did here. Okay, fine. I just go here. And on top of the, of these, uh, this gain amount you apply, you can actually um, also automate the um, resonance like you can see like this bell is more resonant than this other one and basically when this small point reaches this amount means that basically like it's not just the frequency moving it's also the resonant amount which is being automated onto this uh, this uh, band in general and uh, now, once, we, once we've done this, uh, we could just like go back here and um, use again like another equalizer. Uh, again, like um, using the one I, I used before, you can use just anything else, it will do. And we cut again those frequencies because basically when we distort, um, what's happening is that it can um, end up adding it back again some of these bass frequencies that we don't really need don't really need because um, when you're gonna add a kick uh, if you have all this uh, dirt around here then it's gonna mix up with a kick and you it's really gonna be difficult to mix it and make it sound as it's supposed to so we're just gonna cut all this thing again and add some high shelving here Right, so we're definitely going like too much in red and uh, what we could do here is just like go back and uh, use the the brick pool um, limiting of the isotope trash to just gonna try to avoid this. Gain is still going in the red so just go back here and push it down a little bit. Uh, it's uh, very important to notice like um, how the sound changes when you're like actually using the glide so basically I'm still holding one note and then I'm pressing the next and uh, you can hear the, the sound the transition of the pitch from one note to the other 
and it sounds like completely different uh, from when I just pressed them uh, on their own. Just because of the, the glide and uh, basically like uh, every note as this uh, pitch envelope we applied before. And uh, so yeah, pretty. this was pretty much it. Uh, I hope that uh, you find this tutorial useful. Uh, let me know what you think about it on the social networks, on uh, YouTube, on Facebook, on uh, even on SoundCloud. I just left the, the link uh, on the bottom. And on top of this, I just uh, also added the patch of the FM8 on my page. So if you're um, just, uh, if you just want to skip to that and just load it, it's fine. There's a link on the bottom on the page. And um, let's speak later. Bye.